All right, let's talk solving complex ion equilibrium problems, which definitely fall in the category for me of the hold my beer type problems. And the reason I call them that is because we're given pieces of information, and sometimes it feels like too much, sometimes it feels like too little, and it's asking us to find information about something that's seemingly unrelated, but uh, within the problem itself, and based on the knowledge that we're bringing to the problem, we can solve it. And so hold my beer, I can solve this problem. So uh, let's look at this uh, type of problem, which deals with these complex ions we've been talking about, which are these metal cations that have uh, Lewis base ligands that are um, complexed to them. So um, they're already inherently a little bit weird, and these problems can be a little bit um, tricky to kind of piece apart and figure out kind of what exactly is going on. So let's walk through the logic of a problem like this. All right, so we're given that um, that we have a solution that we're starting off making with a 0 0.015 molar copper nitrate and 0 0.100 molar ammonia. And we're asked to find the concentration of copper ions that are in solution. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, the next piece of information here is about the complex ion part. So copper two likes to form this copper ammonia kind of complex ion when there's any ammonia present. And well, how much does it like to do that? In order to figure that out, we need to look at the K value. So the K of formation, that's what that F is there, um, is tells you information about how much this ion likes to be this ion. And in this case, because this number is so large, right, this number is huge, then uh, this tells me that this ion really likes to be a thing. So what we can assume based on this value, because it is so big, is that any copper ions that I have in my copper nitrate, so all of my copper from my initial copper nitrate will react. And it's going to react to form that complex ion. So it likes to be that ion. It's going to form that ion. Nitrates in general are really soluble. So the nitrate's going to be hanging out in solution, kind of not doing anything. But those copper ions that are freed up are going to form the copper um, complex. So let's figure out how much of that copper ion we're going to have. Well, we're starting off with 0.15 molar copper nitrate. So we want to figure out how many copper ions we can get out of that. So we know that that's a one-to-one -one ratio, which for many of you, this is going to feel like kind of a redundant step because we can tell that there's one copper in there to give us, you know, the one copper ion. But we're just being really specific here. And then the one mole of copper is going to give us as many moles of that uh, ion as I possibly can get. So here's my complex ion those tetrahedrally coordinated ammonia ligands. And then if we kind of do the math here, this will all be per liter. I'm keeping it in molarity here because we want concentrations. Because anytime we're talking about equilibrium concentrations of these types of solutions, we're thinking icebox. So we want to think moles per liter. So we end up with, because everything is one to one, this is how much of my complex ion I'm going to start off with. All right, which is great. So if I have this much of my complex ion, I need to figure out how much ammonia goes into making this much, right? If this is how much I have, then how much of this is used up in the process? Because I'm given a certain concentration, but I'm assuming that this is going to be an excess because ammonia is much more common than the copper is. Now, if it turns out that I didn't have enough ammonia to make this, then I'd have to redo my thinking and flip things around and do this the other direction. So I'd figure out how much ammonia I would use and how much of this is used up so you could do it in both directions. Okay, so the next step of my logic then is, well, how much of my ammonia is used up because I want to know how much is left in solution when I start to think about my icebox calculations. So if I'm using 0.15 moles of my copper and for every one mole of copper I need four moles of ammonia, then that means that in order to form that complex ion I've used up this much of my ammonia, my 0.060 moles 
or molarity. You know, again, it's all per one liter because we're not given volumes. This is how much that I've used up in the formation of my ion. And again, I'm being really specific here about kind of the logic behind why I'm doing these because these problems often the hardest part that I hear from students is where do I start with these and so I want to kind of walk through what is going on you need to piece together what is happening in this solution in order to get to the answer to the question which ultimately is how much copper 2 plus is left in solution because so far what I've said is all of the copper 2 plus is being used as the ion right so that looks like none of it's going to be left in solution but as soon as this ion forms we know that the complex ion equilibrium means there's going to be some of that copper ion in solution so that's kind of where we're headed okay so because we need an ice box and we need to put together our equilibrium concentrations i need to know how much was used so i started with this molarity of my ammonia, the 0.1 that was given in the problem. I used up the 0 0.060 molar ammonia. And then again, I'm kind of keeping my molarity units here. We could talk about it in terms of moles. Um, we're just talking about it per liter of solution. And again, we could scale that up or down if we needed to. All right, so we had, this is what I started with. This is what I used up in making that complex ion. I knew that complex ion wanted to form with as much of it as it possibly could because it has such a large KF value. So that means I still have this much ammonia left in solution. So these kind of two pieces, how much ammonia is left in solution and how much of the complex ion would form right off the bat are the pieces that I'm going to bring over to my ice box. Okay, we doing okay so far? All right, let's go to our ice box. All right, so for the icebox part of this, again, we need to take the information that we're given. So we said we initially put together copper nitrate and ammonia and as much of this guy that could form, formed because it wanted to, right? But it is still going to be, once it reacts, once it all reacts to form this, it's still going to create an equilibrium. It's gonna go into equilibrium going to balance itself out the forward and reverse reaction rates are going to be equal um, with its component pieces right so I formed all of this initially and then now it's going to go into equilibrium with the pieces that are left so we're going to do a normal ice box here and get to our equilibrium concentrations now we used up all of the copper in forming this ion so initially once we formed as much of this ion as we can there's no copper in solution but once we get into equilibrium then we'll end up with some amount at equilibrium and this x is really what we're solving for because this is what's going to answer the question of what is the concentration of free copper ions that are left in solution well it's going to be the end of my ice box here okay now with ammonia this is kind of a common ion effect problem, although, you know, ammonia is not an ion, but it's a common element then, or a common compound effect, that when I um, started off, I still had some excess ammonia in there, and that's going to factor in to my problem solving. So I had 0 0.040 molar ammonia left over, and we have uh, four, right, because of our molar quantity there. So at equilibrium, I have 0 0.040 plus 4x. Okay. Now, if we think about the K value for this equilibrium, that's going to be equal to the concentration of my copper ions times my ammonia raised to the fourth power over the concentration of my complex ion. And if we think about what type of reaction this is so what kind of k value this is this is now a dissociation reaction so we formed the ion initially because of that drive to form it because it has such a large formation constant but now that we're trying to figure out kind of what happens once i form it and i'm back in equilibrium now this is dissociation so this is a kd value d for dissociation 
So dissociation, of course, means that we're splitting things apart. So that um, dissociation then has a relationship that KD is related to the K of formation. In a previous video, we learned that they are the inverses of each other, which makes sense because it's really looking at this reaction in either the forward direction or the reverse direction, right? So if I have, I'm starting with a complex ion and I'm splitting it apart, that's dissociation. If I'm starting with the component pieces and forming it, that's formation. So there's this relationship between the two. Now we were given a, a K of formation, so this is going to be equal to 1 over that gigantic number, 4.8 times 10 to the 12th which means that the dissociation constant is quite small, right? So this is a very small number, means that it doesn't really like that. I'm anticipating then that this copper value is going to be quite small at equilibrium. But let's check. Let's run the numbers. So we have our KD value, which we'll just keep as the inverse for kind of clarity's sake. Again, it's going to be a tiny number. And then our concentration of our copper is going to be X. For our ammonia, it's going to be that 0.040 plus 4X raised to the fourth power. And then that is all over 0.015 minus X for my concentration of my complex ion. Now, uh, this looks kind of ugly with the way that I've written it, but because this number is so tiny, right, this is going to be on the order of 10 to the negative 13th compared to these concentrations, which are on the order of 10 to the negative 10th. There's such a big difference between these concentrations and this value that these X's are going to drop out. So we're going to be able to disregard these X's because of precision and sig figs, right? By the time that I add in this X value, which is going to be so tiny, it's not going to matter. It's going to round out. So with respect to the concentrations, we're going to disregard any X's. So now we have 0 0.04 raised to the fourth power divided by my 0 0.015. And then that quantity times X is equal to the inverse of my KF or my KD value here. So when I run the numbers on this, I end up with X is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative ninth. And kind of what was that again? That was my concentration, so it's a molarity, of my copper ions, that X that I solved for in my icebox, right? So ultimately I was solving for this guy, which answered the question of how much copper is left in solution. So all of it, as much of it that could formed the complex ion, that complex ion then reached equilibrium with its component pieces, and at the end of everything, or, you know, kind of, uh, it's not like there's an end point because the reactions are still ongoing. It's a dynamic process. Then we end up with this concentration of copper at equilibrium. Okay. If you have any questions on any of this, please don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I will talk to you again soon.